from the Catholic underground. Today on the show, how we do what we do because you asked for it. Words from Pope Francis on the Middle East, some new online classes, our picks of the week, and so much more. The Catholic Underground starts now. Alrighty, it is time for the Catholic Underground, your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. It's episode number 273. I'm Father Chris Decker. If you are joining us live, you can chat with us at catholicunderground.tv. Joining me this week, we have Father Ryan Humphreys. He's the rector of the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in historic Natchitoches, Louisiana. Hello, Father. Hello, world. Also, Kathleen Lee. She's the campus minister at St. Michael the Archangel High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She's also our fully licensed and bonded faith ninja. Hello, Kathleen. Well, hi. <laughs> I like I like that signature that she's working on. Yeah, I I, I can't ever get one. Right I think now. you've got it. No, that's good. Oh, wow. and then, I like that one. And then everybody knows Jeff Blackwell. He's the technical director of the CU. He's the commandant of the Jeff Star One Near Earth Orbit Satellite. Hello, Jeff. How do you go, neighbor? Jeff is becoming very famous in the uh, the local Catholic television scene. I don't know that. Yeah, because everybody says, oh. Father, you're on that show with that guy, that guy with the voice. Yeah, that's Jeff Blackwell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, the, the guy, yeah. yeah, that guy, <laughs> that guy, yeah, with the glasses. Oh my! And then the unseen, the unseen face is Ed this week. Ed is running the uh, the video for us in the video feed. So Godfather uh, Ed Ball. That's right, Ed the Godfather. Yeah. He is in a way a spiritual Godfather to us all in some way. Yes. Catholic underground, near on a guardian angel. Anyway. Uh, let's let's get right to it. You have asked uh, a number of you uh, have have asked us on Facebook and on uh, several other ways of getting in touch with us. Backchat at CatholicUnderground dot com. How do you do what you do? And boy, oh boy, is that a long story. It really is. Um, and and Father, I think we can agree that since two thousand and six, when we when we started doing this thing called Catholic Underground uh, on the air, um, we we've kind of streamlined a little bit, huh? Yes, indeed. I mean, back then we had each had a, a headset, I think from Sennheiser with a little a little boom that came down and we uh, connected via Skype and used a recorder on each end for audio. And we just talked about whatever seemed good. There was no real structure uh, and there was very, very little real technology. It wasn't pretty. And the biggest, well, the biggest challenge was, you know, how do I send the audio file to you yeah. so that you can add the three or four sound effects we had created? I mean, that was the big drama. Uh, and of course, now it's it's an entirely different world. As I recall, what we had to do in the early days of our show is uh, we had to each record our individual audio. So I had to record on my side my voice, and then Father had to record on his side his voice. And then we would um, he would send the file to me, which in those days was a rather large file. Like, yeah. How do I how do I send that? Now you can send it in a Gmail attachment, and I would then have to put yeah. those together, and you know hopefully they lined up. And there were no errors. And then if there were no errors, um, we would podcast it. We would send it out but, uh, for podcasts. And, and if you'll remember, it was funny. We used to try to figure out ways to sync it up. But because there was, Skype was so unsophisticated at the time, we would try to clap and sync. You never but worked. we would always be off of sync trying to clap. So you'd wind it up and the <laughs> claps would be a, a half a second off. Mm-hmm. It was the most delightfully ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. And we did this for like a year. Yeah. You know? Or two. <laughs> this was our big plan, you know. <laughs> What's the matter, guys? Another wheel coming off? <laughs> clap if you can't whistle. <laughs> Just clap, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so you might be happy, and, and uh, our, our members of the CU here, our, our undergrounders and our, our panelists may be happy that they were not with us for those early days. Yeah. Um, but, but now we have uh, 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 the capability to do so much more because the technology has actually evolved ahead of us, thankfully. It's fun. Not, we haven't caught up with it. It actually went ahead of us, and we're kind of catching up to it. Um, so first it begins with Google Docs, right, Father? Yeah, first we create what we call the rundown. Um, and this is a shared document in Google Docs, and it's, it's a private shared document. And starting generally on Monday or Tuesday after the show is over, um, I got, start going through my OCD pile of news feeds. And I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles every day. And I'll come up with five to ten that really stand out. And sometimes Father Chris will send me some, sometimes Kathleen and Jeff will, will send some. And then I pick out five or ten, and I organize the show into a kind of narrative. So we have a lead topic, 
And then we have some world slash tech stories. And then we have some faith stories. Right. And those are arranged into a kind of narrative with a, with a segue in and then a headline and then uh, filler points, kind of bullet points to, to, to develop the article. And then there are discussion questions. That's right. And uh, in fact, uh, for, for those who are in our, our video um, chat right now, I'll show you, uh, in fact, we'll, we'll bring up the, the, the video um, for those watching. Um, you can actually see that what we're talking about right now is scripted, <laughs> just to kind of keep us, uh, keep us on, on task. And uh, Father, this has actually been a really kind of a big thing for us, is, uh, is, is that we're actually able to follow what each other are saying. Um, beforehand, we actually had to just kind of remember where we were going, or we would send, I believe, a text file in the email with the rundown. We would all just kind of go down the rundown that way. But this, this way, we're actually able to, to kind of um, watch things and edit things live. So if, uh, if we're kind of running over a little bit, uh, Father Ryan can go and strike through a story so I know not to go to that story or to go to a shorter one. And, and it really, really uh, does kind of streamline the, the, the process. Uh, and I think, oddly enough, um, Google has made has made our work a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and so everybody's got it. Jeff has a, a copy of the uh, of the rundown, so he can kind of see yeah. what's coming up next, and uh, maybe what mics need to go up, and and that sort of thing, or if there's going to or be what a, effect you're going to be playing next. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah, and I can only imagine. I don't know, Jeff. Uh, you've been in radio for years. Uh, how? How does this? How did this happen before Gmail? Did everybody just have to have a, a script that they were synced up on? I think it was just called winging it. Uh, rarely, unless it was like a national uh, syndicated program, like yeah. uh, if you go back to Casey Kasem's America's Top Forty, uh, yeah. something like that. All that was scripted, of course. But as far as the day to day or even weekly broadcast, it was sort of, sort of like okay. Let's talk about this, this, and this, and we know we're going to dedicate so many minutes per segment. And it really wasn't scripted out per se; it was just kind of winging it. Yeah, and, and so we we do uh, we do have <laughs> unscripted moments, as, uh, oh, as yeah. Kathleen can attest. The most of them are me. Sorry. Well, yeah, I mean <laughs> Kathleen is very rarely on script, and that's a good thing. <laughs> you know, that, that's actually kind of why we brought her in, you know, because we can be a little staid, and you mm -hmm. know, but uh, but Kathleen is, is good that way. And and if you well, remember, and, hmm? but we're we are. We're careful to script by bullet points so yeah. that that means True. that we can still be spontaneous. Yeah. If there's still an anecdote or a story, there's room for us to move because we've tried scripting it very, very scripted. And and that came off as very flat and mm -hmm. boring yeah. um, because, you know, we, back when Josh was on the show, it was I read a line, Father Chris read a line, Josh read, and it was just, oh, it was terrible. Ooh. So yeah. this kind of bullet point thing gives us room to move. It gives us room to make it our own language, yeah. but it also gives us somewhere to go next so that we don't have dead air. Exactly. Uh, if we were a librarian podcast, that would have maybe been okay. Because I think, you know, you have to keep it nice and even. Kind of like a flat lining on an EKG machine, you know. That's, Good times. Yeah. I'm thinking times. public radio. Yeah, uh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes that's what I think about, too. Don't mm -hmm. you, Kathleen? Yeah, it's yeah delightful. sometimes I do, isn't it? It's delightful. So, um, so as you remember from last week's uh, episode, uh, there is a narrative in place, as Father Ryan said. Um, we have a lead topic world and text stories and then faith stories, and Father Ryan uh, kind of picks those stories so that they more or less will dovetail into one another, um, and he will even help with some of the segues to, to kind of transition those things. And sometimes I'll augment that, um, and usually if a, if a segue fails... It's because I messed it up, or I thought I was going to be clever and didn't work. And then everybody brings their own pick of the week, right? See? Yes. See. Usually. Yes. <laughs> I have one. Kathleen Don't has look one. at me. Kathleen has one. That's true. Okay, so so that's uh, that's the the rundown we call it, and um, and so uh, we can actually we might you know what we might do uh, in our show notes, Father, and I'm saying this on the fly. Uh, maybe uh -huh. we can provide um, through the magic of, of Google Docs. A sample rundown for any of you who might be putting together a podcast of your own. That way, I think we can do that. I, I think that would be a great idea. So that way, you can see what our process is, and then if you like, uh, hey, steal it, use it, develop your own podcast. That's that's what we're about. Anyway, uh, then we have we have tech, right? Um, we have mics and headphones, Jeff. Jeff, uh, we're all using the same microphones here. Yeah, and here, yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was about to say. Well, yeah, sure, Father Chris. It's so easy for you to say. You can just uh, take that thing and develop it and make your own podcast. But, uh, 
uh, how can I do that? I mean, it takes a little, uh, you know, a microphone, mixer. It does. Stuff. And that's the thing is, is once you have the script, it's like having the name of your band, you know. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. I like that. You know, and then you know what kind of band you have. And so yeah, then you got to. That's the hardest part of forming a band is the name. That's true. Kathleen has been struggling with this for yeah. years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, yeah, once you've got this part down, you've got the, the script or the, or the rundown, then you have to figure out, okay, now how am I physically going to, to record all this stuff? Yeah. And so you asked me uh, yep. earlier, the yes, uh, in the station uh, where we put the show together, mm-hmm. uh, and we're doing it live, uh, yeah. we are all using the same type of microphones. But uh, in essence, you can use even a, a, an inexpensive microphone but get the type that is uh, what they call uh, unidirectional or a cardioid pattern, something that's, uh, that you have to work it fairly close because you don't want to pick it up, out, all this ambient sound. Uh, uh, let's say you were doing it in your home and uh, the guy next door is, is mowing his yard. If you had like these little clip-on mics, which are omnidirectional, uh, they pick up everything and that makes the room sound boomy and stuff like that. So these are very tight pattern mics that we're using. They're made by Heil. Uh, That's but, right. Uh, there's many companies that make uh, similar type microphones. Uh, sure, right. and they make Rode. them all really kind of nowadays because everybody's getting into the the individual podcaster broadcaster mm-hmm. kind of market. They they make all different kinds and different price ranges. And uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say. And Father, correct me if I'm wrong. I wouldn't say that you have to have the most expensive. But I also wouldn't say that you can just go to Walmart or the big box store and get a, a nine dollar microphone. You might want to invest a little bit in, in a microphone, mm-hmm. you know, because um, we we've tried the nine dollar route before. Yeah, and, <laughs> Father, and, and Father Ryan might be frozen. There yeah. he is. Yeah, we're having some Skype issues. See, even when you have a <laughs> professional <laughs> professional show, um, sometimes the tech doesn't always work out with you. Um, we also have a, an audio board now. On the Catholic Underground, we have we have gone through several audio boards. Um, we initially started with a, a software audio board, so one that was was on the computer, and so we had all of the stuff, all the different microphones and everything coming into the computer, and and that didn't make for easy editing. Uh, and so from there, we bought uh, a little Alesis Multimix. Alesis is a, a soundboard company. And, um, and that had a USB interface. It was actually one of the very first audio mixers to have a USB interface. And for those of you who may not know what a USB is, it's a, it's a universal serial bus that plugs into almost any computer. And so it was able then to allow the audio that we were taking in with the microphones and put them into the computer and then have the computer uh, record. And and so that was kind of a, a big deal. Now, we've, we've moved a little bit past that because... Uh, as as you know, we are we are presently at uh, the Catholic Community Radio Studios here in Baton Rouge, and um, and that's how we we come to you. And uh, in fact, uh, you can kind of see if you're if you're watching the. I apologize to the audio listeners, all of you who are listening to us on radio, because you can't see. But you can go later to CatholicUnderground.com and see. You can see a little hint of Jeff's soundboard. It's this big board that he sits in front of, and he's got all of the inputs. And he is in charge of our sound levels and everything. And can I just say, it's great to have a guy doing that. Oh, well, that thank used you. to be me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know. And I, I've watched you on, on some of the older uh, podcasts, uh, multitasking. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is a broadcast console here. But the Alesis that you were speaking of earlier, yeah. uh, it really doesn't take a big mixer. The, the, the only thing that you really need to be aware of is if you're bringing in uh, some external sources, uh, and we can talk about mix minus later, but you kind of have to have an audio console that's capable of uh, sending, uh, you know, like a mix yeah. minus the person that you're trying to bring in, like a phone call, for example. You don't want to send them back to themselves or uh, uh, with uh, Skype. Let's see, is Father Ryan back with us? Uh, say hello. Yes, Father. he is. Yeah, good. Okay, good. We had to drop and reconnect. So here we are live. And we're bringing in via Skype, but uh, there was a technical issue, and sometimes you just, you know, drop it and then recall, and it works itself the out. The technical issue was actually scripted, so you could see how that was done. <laughs> exactly. Just, just yeah. so you know. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, uh, we began as an audio podcast, but we then branched out into video, and uh, there have been, I can't even talk about all the different versions of video editing that we've done, mm-hmm. uh, but right now, what we're doing uh, works pretty well. Um, we have some uh, we have some kind of quasi professional lights here. They're they're kind of on the, on the cheap end, but they they provide a soft light. So if you're watching us on, on the video feed, um, you see that it doesn't look like we're sitting in a cave. 
but at the same time, uh, the lighting that's on us isn't isn't harsh, yeah. and and so that's um that's that's part of uh, part of TV magic, folks. Is is you we have a there's like a little a, a sheen like a sheet that's kind of translucent over these uh these corkscrew lights, and so it makes it uh, makes the light soft as it falls on our faces. Is that a diffuser? Or it a... is it is a diffuser, I believe, okay. uh, is what it's called. Um, I'm an audio guy. I wouldn't know. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and then behind me, actually, um, we, we have a, a backdrop. Again, for all of you on radio, this is a beautiful blue backdrop. Uh, this particular model is hand-painted by yours truly. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and we have a couple of other little accoutrements that we've collected over the years um, to, to make a, a video podcast watchable. Because while on YouTube, a, a lot of folks are, are getting by with just uh, you know showing you whatever's going on in their bedroom or yeah. in, their, in their kitchen or whatever, um, we're kind of going for a little bit more, a little bit more of a of a stage type of situation, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Um, but really, for you who are are kind of maybe foraying into the digital continent, um, y- y- who knows? Your your kitchen may be just fine. It may work for you. And then of course we have cameras. Uh, the cameras may seem um, rather pricey, but these are a little. Uh, I believe if if you get them, at, if you find them on sale. These are like $180 cameras. Yeah. So we've collected them over time. That's also why we only have three. <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, so we got Jeff, we got Kathleen, we got myself, but uh, anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. You're on your own. You're on your own. Bring your own camera. Left okay. to the imagination. BYOC. Ooh. And then for the video mixer, we've done some software type of options. There are a couple of free options. One that comes to mind that we used for a while is called Cam Twist. And uh, you bring all of your video and audio sources into your computer and it's a free switching utility where you can switch the cameras. There's a lot of uh, a lot of workability with it, a lot of usability. But for us, again, we were trying to go for something that was a little a little cleaner, and uh, and so we actually use a Black Magic, um, not actually Black Magic, but it is a it, the brand is Black Magic, and it's called uh, uh, the Black Magic ATEM Switcher One. Uh, ME, one multimedia editor. And so that allows us to bring all of our cameras in. Whenever we show you a computer shot, we bring our computer shot in. And so everything is is mixed and sent out to you. Um, and uh, and you know what we might do on one of these days is actually a little behind-the-scenes video um, of, of what it what it looks like uh, from our end. Because right now, if you're if you're watching us or you're listening to us, you hear and see the finished product more or less. Um, but right. there's a there are a lot of cables running around here. Oh, they are. Quite a few. Yeah, mm-hmm. running across the floor. Yep. And then, of course, we've also, Father, we've started live streaming. Right. That's been something that's been a big, big part of what we're trying to trying to get done and trying to make happen. Yeah. And uh, and thanks to you who uh, who have helped us uh, with your prayers and also your financial donations, we've been able to, to do the, the audio streaming and the video streaming. And through the, the benevolence of Catholic Community Radio, we actually now go live out on the radio um, in Baton Rouge and in New Orleans, and Homa, and along the Gulf Coast. So if you're uh, you're getting to Pensacola, good on you. It means you're probably taking a late vacation. We're happy about that. And then, of course, uh, Father Ryan, because he's all the way up uh, north Louisiana, comes to us over Skype. Right, and that's that's something that's grown so much since we started this project. Skype was originally really tough. It was a low-quality feed. There wasn't really anything you could do with it, and it had all these weird settings like it adjusted your volume control, and it used to be, I mean, ungodly. And now Skype has become such a high-end pro product yeah. that all oh, it's turnkey. You know, we can we we have a whole computer dedicated to grabbing the Skype signal and putting it into the to the, the soundboard. But beyond that, we we have to do very very little, remarkably little, to make a really high def feed come from here from my computer into the computer at the studio. And it's it's you really can't be estimated how difficult that used to be. And how easy Skype makes it to do a super high quality product. That's true. In fact, Skype knows this about itself, and so they actually have something called Skype TX, which is their enterprise solution for actual broadcasters. They know people are using Skype mm-hmm. um, in in major news organizations, and so they're beginning to capitalize on that as well. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just thankful that the free version of Skype that we use uh, for audio and video doesn't overlay ads, because I mean. How would you like being able to, to talk to Father Ryan and all of a sudden you, you get an ad for, you know, uh, for the dog food that you ordered online a little bit earlier? You know? <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, and so, again, back to the broadcast. So we have all the tech here, all the hardware. Uh, and then, as Father said, we, we, you, we go down our rundown. And it's scripted by bullet points, but it's also spontaneous, allows us to kind of go off script and to talk uh, like we're doing right now. And then uh, Father Ryan, as best as he can, tries to assign topics to the panelists so that 
we'll um, have a chance to to research something on our own and then uh, be able to talk about it with at least a little bit of of, of um, facility. At least that's the idea. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you know <laughs> Kathleen comes in, she goes, "Which one? What's mine? What's mine?" <laughs> it was mighty quiet. Sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. Anyway, so that's how that works. Yeah. See, we, we haven't assigned this to anybody. That's why. We're well, that's true, about. and we're kind of waiting to see who, who's exactly. going to pick it up and run with the ball. That's right. So anyway, uh, after these awkward moments, um, the topics are assigned to panelists. I then segue, um, and then I introduce the topic, as you know, and then the, the panelist fills in some detail, and then we discuss. We'll do that a little bit later in the show, so you'll see how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and, and mm-hmm. one thing you have not mentioned is your little magic box over there. Your uh, oh yeah, uh, because now he uh, Father Chris kind of has all the sound effects and everything uh, put together, and he hits those cues whenever he feels like it. And I better be paying attention. That's true. You better, otherwise, it doesn't work. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's how that works. Uh, anyway, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, that's okay, and that's actually a fairly recent addition to be able to do that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so. Um, this is a good segue to uh, Father Ryan and myself. We watch the clock. And so, uh, I mean, I have, uh, I have our show clock here that tells me where we are on the radio because we do go live out on the radio. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I'm keeping an eye on where we are in our discussion uh, using just my computer clock here. Yeah. And, uh, and so then if something's running long or a little short, um, Father Ryan will then uh, use Google Docs and let me know, okay, uh, stop talking about this and move on to the next. Uh, yeah, course, but, but mm-hmm. also, might I interject? Yeah, this? yeah. Because while they're doing all that, they are in and out of the chat room all the time talking to those people who are, you know, sending little messages and notes, and I still don't know how that works. Oh, well, you know, um, that's, that's maybe it's a gift of order, of holy orders, that ability to, to, uh, to bilocate digitally. <laughs> Digital bilocation. I, I like know. that. I don't know, because Kathleen's pretty good at it, too, so I, I can't yeah. say that it's holy orders. I mean, Maybe it's baptism. It's just an extension of baptism or confirmation. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember that being one of the original gifts of the Spirit. No. Being able to communicate. It's not, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Phew, well. But it's, it's part of working in the, in the digital content. You just kind of learn how to do it, or you have a nervous breakdown. You That's know, right. Or a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. And then at a fixed time. I uh, try to have a good nervous breakdown once a week. Yeah, ex- at least. Weekly. And then around uh, and then around forty five minutes uh, after the hour, we uh, we cut to the picks of the week, and then we segue from that into the end of the show stuff. That's a basic broadcast for us. Um, and then we post produce. This is the stuff that that you don't ever see, but you are the recipient of. Uh, yeah. Jeff records the audio. Um, we have a little digital audio recorder that's fairly new to the Catholic that's Underground right. family. That's right. And In fact, because of that, yeah. we're able to. Because used to, I'd have to wait for Father Chris to. Uh, put the audio in uh, in Dropbox, which I would download at my office, and then kind of take care of the post sweetening and leveling and all that stuff, and then upload it, which you'll talk about in a minute. But uh, now, because we have uh, the ability to record that, we uh, it was a distribution app that we were uh, needing uh, to because we've got so many there's so many things going on all at once. Yeah, you've got the uh, the the video feed that's going live, but you're also recording at the same time, and that requires audio. Uh, we're doing the podcast audio live. We're also recording it so we can, uh, you know. Distribute it later. Distribute it later, yeah. So there's uh, many things going on. So because of the DA, the distribution app, and the recorder, we can actually turn it around within minutes after the show now. It's, That's it's, right. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Just like the pros. Um, in the chat room, William's wondering, how many inputs can Jeff's board handle? Well, this is a 15 input yeah. console. Uh, but uh, if you really get technical about it, because each input has is an AB input, so it would do um, technically 30, but you can only use 15 at once. Yeah. But it's the outputting that uh, where the broadcast console really comes in neat, because you can assign uh, each of these outputs to, to go one of three different ways. So that's a good question. Yeah, so wherever you need it, uh, the, the audio can go. In fact, we are, we are sending audio all over so that it can be streamed, so that it can be recorded, so that it can go to the transmitter or the radio transmitter. Yep. Uh, really amazing stuff. Um, and then uh, the video mix uh, actually gets recorded. Another little new member of the family, thanks to you who are supporting the Catholic Underground. Uh, we, we record to a little uh, thing called an Atomos Ninja, and it is a solid-state recorder. It's basically a hard drive that shoves in the back of a screen, and then you press on the touchscreen record, and it records it, it is a in cool Apple ProTime uh, uh, ProRes uh, 422. And then uh, at the end of the show, uh, as I'm getting ready to walk out the door, 
I pull a little hard drive out, take it to uh, my workshop, my dear, and I edit it there, and I bring it back here. No, I um, I, I take it and I, I uh, put it into my, the Mac Pro at uh, at Rectory Prime, and uh, and I edit the show. Usually, I'll I'll have it. I'll I'll uh, dump everything in on Sunday evening, and then on Monday morning after my 8 a.m. mass, I'll enjoy my cup of coffee and edit the show and try to get the show to you uh, anywhere between Monday sometimes Tuesday, and then from there, um, a, a 16 by 9 high-definition version of that goes to Vimeo, to YouTube, and then a standard-definition version of that goes to our local Catholic uh, cable channel, and it airs on Catholic Life Television in the Diocese of Baton Rouge. Um, it, it's also distributed on, on Liberated Syndication. Those are the ones who handle um, our, our audio podcast, and we've actually, as of this week, um, submitted... Uh, a video version, a standard definition video version of our podcast. So hopefully within the week, if iTunes, you know, does its thing, uh, you'll be able to uh, to subscribe to our video podcast using iTunes or whatever uh, flavor of podcast or podcatcher you use. How nice. Yeah. That's uh, great. You can also play the video and the audio at catholicunderground.com. It goes out to YouTube, as I said, to Vimeo. I haven't sent anything to Gloria.tv in a while, um, but mainly because I just haven't reintegrated into my workflow, but that's another kind of Catholic YouTube thing. And then, of course, it goes out over terrestrial radio. It's replayed throughout the week, and it's uh, syndicated on uh, on Catholic Live Television and, uh, I believe, to St. Michael Broadcasting. Hey, guys, uh, in uh, in the Diocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. Yay. So, whew, that's, uh, that's how we do what we do. Uh, it, it's It's weird to talk about. It is uh, because I mean we're we're not only are we peeling back the the curtain here for you to see what's happening uh, in in Oz the Great and Powerful's laboratory, <laughs> but there's a lot that goes into being able to provide this to you. And you know what, my brothers and sisters, we wouldn't have it any other way. Alrighty, you are listening to the Catholic Underground. We are online at catholicunderground.tv. I am Father Chris Decker. Father Ryan Humphreys joins us on Skype uh, from the Diocese of Alexandria and his church there, the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Historic Natchitoches. And Jeff Blackwell is in the audio room. Kathleen Lee is sitting right here. And, of course, Ed is on the ball with our video direction in the video cave. Our picks of the week are coming up in a little bit. But first, um, you know, one of the best ways to follow the one true God is to learn about him. This is why you have to go to catechism as as a kid, and this is why your catechism, Kathleen, doesn't end whenever you uh, are confirmed, right? That's true. It yeah. doesn't end. Absolutely. Exactly. And so um, we we are obligated by virtue of our baptism to continue our education. Mm-hmm. And for some, if they can can squeak out the time, mm-hmm. uh, that means going back to school. And so uh, the Angelicum Academy. And, and no, no, not that Angelicum. Uh, you, you might be thinking of the Angelicum in Rome. I know that's probably what Jeff was thinking of. Um, but uh, it's, it's but, a natural of me. But. Yeah, I mean, you think Angelicum, you think, oh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Dominican School, Rome. Um, the, the Angelicum Academy uh, has partnered with Father Fessio at Ignatius Press to offer an online accredited degree course in the liberal arts. Now, uh, we, we, should, we should preface this by saying the reason that Father Ryan, are so, rather, Father Ryan and I are so dangerous is that we have degrees in the liberal arts. Do you have a liberal arts degree as well, Kathleen? I have a theology degree. Yeah. Theology, it's a math degree, M-A-T-H, Master's in Theology. No, it's not. I don't have a Master's, I just have a Bachelor's. It's a Bachelor's in mm-hmm. Theology? Okay, so Father Ryan and I have a Bachelor's in the liberal arts, mm-hmm. which is like having a Swiss Army knife, mm. you know? Um, so can you imagine, Father Ryan, your average, your average Pinteresting mom or dad these days, hey, it's 2014, um, getting a liberal arts degree online? I can't imagine a guy using Pinterest, but I can imagine those people getting <laughs> degrees online, and I think it'd be a great thing. Yeah, and uh, and so uh, the the Angelicum Academy, uh, they are, we should say, a, a, a homeschooling uh, group. They provide courses for those who homeschool, um, but they have also started this degreed course in uh, in the liberal arts. That's a, a college course. It's not free, and Father, I suppose we could say it's not easy, right? Yeah, I mean, what they're talking about is is serious college-accredited courses in history, literature, the great 
uh, readings, the great uh, classics of Western culture. So this is a serious curriculum. This isn't something you do, um, you know, when you have an extra two hours once a week. This is the kind of thing that's going to take real energy and effort, probably five to ten hours of work every week, and you're going to pay for it. Certainly not what you'd pay at a real college campus, but you're going to pay probably a, a hefty sum. So if you're going to do this, it's going to be a serious investment. But I'm really hopeful this is a lot better than what I did with John Paul II Academy. Yeah, because I paid the same fees that online uh, that on campus student paid, and I got a much less than than real graduate level course. So, I mean, I'm I'm really hoping this is something better. Yeah, and of course it's worth saying that that John Paul II um, uh, University uh, or John Paul the Great University. Uh, was, has been maybe a little ahead of its time in offering some of these courses, and so uh, I don't know what they're they're doing now, but um, but they seem to be kind of pushing a, a little bit more their their online programming, and so it's possible that they're that they're like everybody else, they're kind of getting getting with it and, and really getting the the gears moving, you know. Um, but uh, but this let, let's take a look really quick at the uh, the theology courses. There are four theology courses. Uh, with this fundamental theology, revelation, and Christology, it's a three-credit hour. Um, it, it involves the careful reading of C.S. Lewis's miracles. Uh, it involves um, the Second Vatican Council's dogmatic constitution on divine revelation, DV, De Verbum. And then, of course, um, <laughs> G.K. Chesterton's The Everlasting Man. And so you're getting a really well-rounded, uh, sounds like, uh, course in fundamental theology. And then also in fundamental theology, the creed. Jesus of Nazareth, of course, which are, um, uh, I was about to say Cardinal Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI, so the Pope Emeritus, his, uh, his book series, books one and two. And then, of course, um, a three-credit hour course on the liturgy, um, which I can only imagine must be really good. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, that's just the fundamental theology course. Uh, and, and I tell you what, I, that's something. That's, that's a lot to go through, Father. That's a lot to go through. Yeah, I mean that that's not that's not an amateur hour course. And of course we study these things in graduate school, but that's that's gonna be something that's really a lot of energy for uh for someone who who may not have a significant background in theology to find right. out what is Christology, how do I get my head around that, how do I understand grace in the book of Revelation? That's the kind of thing that requires a good bit of, of not just reading, but time to let that soak in, thinking about it, you know, and then learning how to articulate these things. So it's a real course. This is a real good, valuable program. And, and would you say, Kathleen, that, uh, that studying theology is something you really do have to devote yourself to? I mean, it's, it's not something you can kind of do, eh, I'm kind of a, a coffee table yeah. theologian. But. Yeah, you know, when I went to, to study, I went to regular college for a couple years, and then I went to study theology, and I thought, ah, I got this. I've been a Catholic for 20-something years. Yeah. And, and I've worked. actually been living my faith. Yeah. yeah. Not so. I, the first the first course I actually took was liturgy, and I was like, <laughs> crazy, mind blown every yeah. day. It was yeah. something that I had to. I mean, I mean, it talks about being these being serious courses. Yeah, yeah. You strike an oil pretty much every yeah. class mm -hmm. because you go, oh, that's, that's what that means. That. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you get tested on it, and you forget promptly uh -huh. when the mm -hmm. oil was struck. You know, yeah. um, so so these courses are not free. They're they're not free. There are some online courses uh, that you can take uh, for not credit that, that are free that are offered. I think John Paul the Great might offer one on fundamental Catholicism, but these are like seven hundred and fifty bucks um, a, a course, right? Yeah, I mean it, it looks like it, and, and these, these are accredited courses, so this is not the same as just going to iTunes U and listening to a lecture. This is right, but you yeah, know, this, really, it, it's this can it's count a towards thing. a degree, right? Yeah, and you can get up to sixty hours. Assuming that the college accepts it, but I mean, it's generally it's it's, it's accredited colleges. So it's a good thing. Yeah. So so who would you think uh, that this is for? If you had to kind of say, well, is this for your armchair theologian, or is this for somebody who is is looking for a degree in theology that they can then go and perhaps get a job at the diocese or in their parish, or or maybe even a degree of learning or a, an institute of learning? I think this is for people who already have. I think this is for people who already have degrees, uh -huh. and for, for I think this is an opportunity for a diocese to say, this is what we need you to do in order to be, say, the director of education, or this is something that you might say a Catholic high school teacher is being asked to do as continuing ed. Um, it's a little too expensive for armchair theologians, and yeah. it's not quite enough 
for an undergrad who says, I want to finish my degree off with these people, you know, so I think it's got to be seen more as a continuing ed kind of perspective than it is something that is complete and whole in itself. But it's not 100 percent clear whether they're planning on extending this to be a full curriculum or, or, or what the, the long term goal is right now, though. I think it's for for expanding upon people who already have some basics in yeah. their mind. Cuz it's it's pretty hard to go back to school, you know, and, yeah. and 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 if this is kind of your first foray into into learning, into high the, the institutes of higher learning. Um would you maybe suggest and Kathleen since you're kind of the the freshest one who's mm-hmm. degreed, um would you advocate maybe going to a brick and mortar school to kind of get your you know, your chops. I did that um, in college. In my last sem- semester, I took all online courses. And, and right now, for me, if I were to go back, that's, you know, in fact, I have been looking at online programs um, just because it allows me to work and and my brain works that way. I, I did really well online. Um, if you're not an online person, you know, I wouldn't jump in. I wouldn't jump in. Right. Feed first. Yeah. Um, I maybe maybe take a course and, and say, see how you do, you know, because that's a lot of responsibility. It's not, you don't have to go to class. You just have to turn stuff in. And so uh, making the time, putting putting that into your schedule, you know, and not having to go to that, that yeah. class is is a lot of a lot of work. Yeah, these are these are the things that uh, that you you actually have to begin to structure your life. Yeah. In a different way mm-hmm. <laughs> before yeah. you make a decision like this. Yeah. But uh, as you know, this is also something that we take to prayer too. Lord, uh, are you calling me to further my education? It turns out that this is also a part of discernment. Kathleen, you had to discern whether or not the yeah. Lord was calling you to pursue a degree in theology and, right. and whether it would be uh, beneficial for you, not just in your professional life, but also in all those other areas, those pillars of, of, uh, of formation as yeah, well. Absolutely. And, uh, and so maybe, maybe the Lord is calling you to that. And so uh, certainly... You can uh, respond to that call one way or the other because we all have to take these things into prayer. All righty, you're listening to The Catholic Underground. We are your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. You can join us, as always, at facebook.com slash catholicunderground, twitter.com slash cathunderground. You can subscribe to us on YouTube by searching out Catholic Underground. I promise you, we're there. And, uh, of course, CatholicUnderground.tv is where you can find uh, just about everything that we do. Well, okay, bless their hearts. The USCCB is launching um, a service called My USCCB. And it's, it's one of these services that, uh, that I, I see what they're trying to do. Uh, they're they're trying desperately to to uh, be present to um, to Catholics who who are looking for good resources. Um, but the the interesting things is uh, one of the interesting things is is what I call my Catholics default to cheese principle. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> I I have to say so far um, it it my USCCB hasn't quite reached its instrument yet. Now. Uh, I should I should caveat that by saying I have not subscribed to it, so I I don't know past the uh, the the user sign in um, what what's happening on the other end of it, uh, but uh, but it's just one of those things where it, it seems a little so far outdated, um, and, and and the service itself costs twelve dollars a month, so uh, so that's what you're paying twelve bucks a month, and it consists of basically kind of a closed social network. Uh, so you can you can chat with other people and interact with other people inside the the my USCCB uh, parenthesis. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, it consists of um, of some undefined resources. Now I'm not sure what those are again because I haven't gone past the paywall. Uh, and then of course you can view those and you can print those, but you can't reformat them or incorporate them into other products or, or use them as part of a class. In fact, the USCCB does in fact have. Um, a, a good uh, PDF talking about what all this stuff is. And some of the things that they say that, that you can do is you can download and view the material on any device. So presumably it's, um, it's, it's friendly for your, yeah. your mobile or for your laptop or for a desktop. Um, you can print it in whole or in part and distribute it without charging your parish, your Dawson office, your school or institution, which is actually a very good thing, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you can include uh, brief excerpts in your bulletin or your newsletter and things like that. But there are a lot of thou shalt nots to it. 
Um, and and in and kind of this the world in which we live, this this diversified, uh, you know, make information freely available. That's a little problematic, I find, and and I think this is kind of what we've talked about in the past with stuff from the USCCB uh, website and some of their publications, where it's so kind of locked down that it's really difficult to get to, you know. Um, and so there are also uh, video webinars, uh, when, and again, you know, um, the 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 effort so far is 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 a good. It's a good A for effort. But it hasn't quite found its um, its instrument yet. Now, um, I will say it looks like they have a lot of the hardware resources in place. You know, so so these these videos are obviously being live switched. They're using Skype to chat with bishops and things like that. Uh, but uh, but but they're maybe not quite there yet. And of course, this is this is me. I'm Father Chris Decker, non professional. <laughs> you know, talking. Um, so I. Interestingly enough, you can you can kind of see how people are voting on this by seeing how much coverage it has in the Catholic blogosphere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So far, tell us, tell us. Not much. Hmm. Yeah, you've been real cautious there. I've noticed that you kind of. I am being very cautious because, well, I, I let, let's let's talk about what we what we did in 2006 versus right now. Exactly. Yeah. Whenever the Catholic Underground launched in 2006, um, people would have said, you know. It's a good effort, but uh, I don't think so, you know. And um, and just because the the USCCB, uh, I can't say these are not all of the bishops. This is the, the 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 corporation, you know, the the corporation that is the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. These are all their folks in the social media office and the communications office. This is is their initiative. That's that's uh, that's backed by the bishops. Certainly, um, they're they're trying to to launch into this space. And so I guess uh, Father Ryan, if if are you with us there, Father? Yeah, I'm I'm here. Yeah, and and I agree. We do. Are we, we happy need... that they're trying? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's hard to say we're happy they're trying because the difference between what Catholic Underground was doing back in 2006 uh, and and what's happening now is that we were at the very bleeding edge of what the tech could do. Yeah, and so you know there was a certain amount of we can't do a better product because the tech is not there yet. Whereas this product, again, and it's a good effort, it's a good intention, is at least 10 years behind the yeah. bleeding yeah. edge. So even, even the phrase, my USCCB, harkens back to MySpace, yeah. and it harkens mm-hmm. back to, to my dot, insert your website here. Um, and it was a valiant effort, but the idea of a closed social network, the idea of, of making kind of hour-long webinars, you know, it, what hurts me and what makes me upset is, well, the thing I've always pressed in Catholic Underground is that we should always use the resources that we really are good at. You know, and with Catholic Underground, that is the personality and the fun and the quirky and the tech. And, and when we've gotten further away from that, it's gone badly for us. Yeah. And what the USCCB has is bishops. Yeah. It's got access to the teachers of the church. It's got access to all these documents. And it's got the copyrights, right. which it holds on to very, very tightly. And rather than use those natural gifts, they've kind of basically said, let's just ignore all those things and go out and grab stuff that's freely available elsewhere and then stick it behind a paywall. And, you know, I I don't I don't know who they're trying to reach out to, but it feels like they're just trying to do something to do something. Yeah. Um, You know, and and I don't want to say that it's individual bishops again, because it's not. It's this organization. But it feels like this is a progress that's been in the works for half a decade. And even then, it started half a year, half a decade behind schedule. Yeah. You know, and well, you I, know, I just I'm not impressed. I think about the uh, the Catholic Television Network of America, the CTNA, that was uh, that was the U.S. Bishops uh, Conference uh, desire to have a Catholic television network that was distributed via satellite to all the dioceses and parishes in the United States, and and that was a very kind of limited way of looking at what satellite communications could do. But it wasn't unconventional. It was basically what everybody thought that satellite TV was for, right? Was not just to beam into everybody's home, but to beam into certain people's homes who had the equipment um, and, and perhaps the, uh, the, the money to fork over for a subscription to that satellite transponder to, to pay for it. And this almost seems a little bit like that because the CTNA was a very closed system and we saw with EWTN and, and now other Catholic networks that have come to the fore, 
that that kind of closed system just doesn't work. It, d- it doesn't really work. And we see with um, the, the expansion of social networks that a closed social network really can't bring a whole lot of, uh, I hate to use the word fruit, but it can't bring a whole lot of life, you know. Uh, and so there, there are some good things here. Um, like I say, I, w- I, would, I would give them the A for effort, certainly, because I am happy that they're trying. Um, but I, I, I get the sense that it's a, well, you're supposed to be on the digital continent, so we're on the digital continent. You know, there's a, it's a little plastic, as you say, Father, whenever you get away from what your natural gifts are, sometimes you begin to kind of reach a little too far, you know. And if it's just a pay for printing of the online liturgy planning guide, well, I would say OCPsliturgy.com is cheaper. It's 1075 a month. That's 129 a year. Um, but it allows you to print uh, all of the, the liturgy planning stuff, the collects and the readings and things that you need. So, again, I'm, I'm willing to give it, I'm willing to give it uh, at least, um, uh, you know, a, a look here uh, because the bishops do have an important voice and we get hints of the courage of, of the bishops in their own newspapers and local affiliate TV coverage. But it would seem to me that my USCCB could be the venue for them to shine. You know, um, the, this could be the bishop broadcasting system so, so that they <laughs> can, can get the word out, right, the gospel. And, it, and it's difficult with priests, to be sure, Uh, And I know it's probably going to be difficult with bishops all over the U.S. too, but the gospel we have to proclaim with one voice. We do. And this is perhaps the launch into that. So I give you an A for effort, my USCCB. I look forward to seeing where where we can go um, in the future. All right. Before we go to our picks of the week, Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a word from our chief shepherd, Pope Francis, about the situation in the Middle East. And and this is a quote from him. the news coming from Iraq leaves us in disbelief and dismay. Thousands of people, including many Christians, brutally driven from their homes. Children dead from thirst and hunger during their escape. Women who were abducted, people slaughtered, violence of every kind. Destruction everywhere, destruction of homes, destruction of religious, historical, and cultural patrimonies. All this greatly offends God and greatly offends humanity. You cannot bring hatred in the name of God. You cannot make war in the name of God. And uh, that's, those are the words from Pope Francis, uh, the, our, our Rome correspondent for the Catholic Underground. I don't know if I can say that anyway. I think you just did. I just did. And that's okay. Uh, but but the, the Holy Father is speaking about this. Uh, I was watching uh, some secular television this past week, and they were saying, I can't believe the Pope isn't talking about it. Mm-hmm. You haven't been watching The Angelus. You, you haven't been listening. Um, he has been speaking about this, and I do believe uh, a man by the name of... Um, uh, of Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger as Benedict XVI was speaking about this. And there was a man uh, named, um, I think we call him now St. John Paul II, mm-hmm. who was speaking about this as well. And uh, this is something that is real, and it is becoming all too apparent. And so we, my brothers and sisters, uh, you fellow undergrounders, we have to pray. Because right now that's the only weapon that we've got. And it's a weapon of peace, and not a weapon that is, that, that is a physical sword. And so, brothers and sisters, join me in praying for for peace in Iraq and Syria, for peace in Israel and Jordan, uh, for, for peace in our, own, in our own country, because the peace that we pray for doesn't become a reality until hearts are converted to Jesus Christ, because there is no other name by which we can be saved. And that is the gospel truth. Uh, now is the time that we like to go to, and we call it... The CU Pick of the Week. All righty. We have been... All over the map uh, for this episode, but it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna move kind of quickly through our CU picks of the week, and so uh, I don't know, Kathleen. Yeah, what you got? Well, okay, I've been I've been noticing some things for a couple years in in women who come to mass, um, and one of the things that I am noticing this beautiful trend are is the I guess resurrection of the chapel veil mm-hmm. or the mantilla, which it which they also call it. Yep. Um, and before Vatican II, it was required for women to wear to wear chapel veils or mantillas to, to, the, to mass. And so uh, my pick of the week is a, is a um, I guess, a it's an online store. It's called Veils by Lily. Um, and it's got beautiful veils, beautiful veils um, that you can buy. And they're like 40 bucks. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it talks, and it, this is also a double doozy because I've been researching why, why women were to wear veils. Yeah. And there is a blog called Mantia With Me. It's oh. awesome. Mantia with me dot blogspot dot com. And it does a lot of um 
pictures of women wearing chapel veils. You know, a lot of women who visit the Pope because and then some reasons why. Yeah, and so one, you know, I'm just going to read very shortly, not the whole quote, but it has in here. It says, "The wearing of the mantilla is an act of veiling a woman's physical beauty, that the beauty of God may be glorified instead. It is also a way of emulating Mary, our mother, who is the architect archetype of purity and humility." Moreover, the mantilla or chapel veil signifies the role of women as a life-bearing vessel. So it's just very interesting, this this beauty that is the veil. Um, and we wear them at in our wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, but Or our first communion. Right, or our first communion. And so why not wear them um, to Mass? And so it's not something that I am, am practicing, um, but I'm very, very interested and I've been looking at it. So um, yeah. uh, veils by Lily and mantilla with me. And and it's good. It's good, as you say, Kathleen. Even it's something that that you're not doing at the moment mm-hmm. um, to be able to inform yourself. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we we will do things because of the nostalgia or because we like the look. Uh, but it's it's very advantageous for for we as Catholics uh, to to learn about the mm-hmm. traditions that that have kind of maybe passed into into disuse. Yeah. And to see why that happened, should it have happened. And then maybe is there something that I can do to uh, to to educate myself, and then maybe to resurrect it. Yeah, you know, um, and I know Father Ryan that that you've perhaps seen that in in your own parish. I have. I've had. I, I mentioned it at Epiphany time, just as an offhanded thing in the bulletin, and I now have about ten or twelve ladies who have started wearing their veils, and it's just such a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, do you know the only woman who has the right to wear a white veil in the presence of the Pope? according to the old rules of chivalry. There's oh, one woman on the planet who can have a white veil. Is it the queen? Of which country? Um, would, it be a, would it be a Catholic country, a presently Catholic country? Yes. Monaco? Spain. Spain, Spain. Mm. Arenia is the only one who is allowed to wear a white veil. It was, it was given years and years and years ago, I think the 16th century, as a privilege only to that nation. To Just a Spanish- neat little quirky... To the Spanish monarch. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Well, we go to our, our local Spanish monarch, Jeff Blackwell, for his <laughs> oh, pick of the week. <laughs> si, senor. Blackwell, yeah. Oh, my pick of the week. Uh, this is uh, August 10th, and uh, this Sunday is a super Sunday. It's going to sound like a commercial, but this is uh, tonight is the night of the super moon, um, and it is a peak full moon. And uh, this one particularly this year, we've had, uh, or will have five this year. We have one coming in September as well. But uh, it's going to be the brightest, and it's also called the sturgeon moon, the green corn moon, and the grain moon. Uh, but NASA says the full moon tonight will be 14% closer and 30% brighter than a usual full moon. So mm. if you live in an area where you can actually, and actually uh, uh, I saw some pictures from last night where even cloud cover, uh, the moon, the brightness was able to, to punch through the clouds. So it was bright. Think, the moon was bright last night. Yeah, t- take a look tonight uh, if you're, especially in an area where you can see it. Uh, Moonrise is going to be just incredible. And then um, be looking for photography. There's some great sites uh, for photography all over the internet and some beautiful uh, pics, pictures that is of the moon. I've got a link if you want to check it out uh, for viewing tonight. That's so, right. Uh, that's my yeah. pick of the week. And and my pick of the week is a book that uh, that I've been enjoying. In fact, I'm not all the way through it. In fact, I'm. I'm barely through the the beginning of the of the first chapter of it. It's it's um, it's thick like a good like a good mushroom soup, um, and uh, and it's called "Dangers to the Faith: Recognizing Catholicism's 21st Century Opponents" by Al Cresta. Uh, for those of you who listen to us on the radio, you may be familiar with uh, Al Cresta in the afternoon, uh, who is a a, a tremendous uh, apologist on Catholic radio. Uh, he is actually the He's the head guy over at uh, Ave Maria Radio, and this is a very comprehensive book on right now the present dangers of uh, to the Catholic faith. Part one uh, talks about abusers of spirituality and revelation. Part two is abusers of science and reason. Part three is abusers of the past and the future. Part four is abusers of power and wealth. And he uses all of those definitions to talk about some of the isms, if you will, uh, that present a danger to, to uh, our Catholic faith. And I think uh, a book like this is is becoming increasingly more important for us um, because uh, because the world in which we live is becoming increasingly um, more difficult to reason with. And so any more that, that we can learn 
uh, to, to try and reason with uh, the reason that is left, you know, uh, in, in a kind of a declining culture is really important. And so, uh, so, so far, what I've read, very good. He starts off, just to give you a little hint, a little teaser, uh, he starts off talking about, um, about new age to the self style spirituality of Oprah. And if you, know, mm. if you know me, then you know that I like talking a lot about the kind of the fopra, <laughs> uh, if you will. Uh, or Popra, as some call her. Anyway, so uh, that's my pick of the week. Uh, you can find that on our show notes. You can go to catholicunderground.com, and whenever the episode is up and published, you'll be able to go to our show notes and to get all the things that, that we've talked about. That's at catholicunderground.com, and you click on uh, the latest the latest link there. All righty, uh, Jeff, we have, we have some good friends here. Who, oh, uh, we do, but did yeah. Father Ryan have a pick of the week? Oh, did I skip you, Father? I did. That's okay. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> Sorry. The, Amazon has an incredible service called smile.amazon.com. Oh, yeah. And they will give a portion of everything that you buy to a charity. And, in fact, people like the Minor Basilica, the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, can be the beneficiary really? of this. You And you can you, you go to smile.amazon.com, and it uh, remembers who you've chosen. Mm-hmm. And, and then everything you buy... It's like having a code built in. And, uh, and in fact, they'll remind you to go there once you've set it up on your account. When you go to Amazon.com, they'll say, you're sure you don't want to do this at smile.amazon.com? Right now, I'm signed up to support the, uh, the Knights of Columbus International, uh, but it is a spectacular thing. It's very easy. It's also very free, and it's a good way to make sure that you're supporting uh, some charity. And so smile.amazon.com, easy as that. I use that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Me the Catholic Underground isn't there yet. But I'm it talking. Will be. I'll Let's talk with it. the CEO this week. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Father. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where where you, you, it was so short. Smiled on Amazon.com. I didn't think there was anything there. So I don't blame you, <laughs> but I will. So, and, well, it's okay. I'm not. I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. And so now we uh, we have some special people to mention. Yeah. Yes. Portions of the Catholic Underground are brought to you by AudibleTrial.com/slash Catholic Underground. That's AudibleTrial.com. Slash Catholic Underground. That's right. And this week, Catholic Underground is possible because of people like Christopher and Matthew. Join the growing number of undergrounders at catholicunderground.com slash donate. If you want the show notes that accompany this episode, you can go to catholicunderground.com and find out all the ways to connect with us on social media. Father Ryan's church is online at minorbasilica.org. He's at FR Humphreys on Twitter. Thank you, Father Ryan, for your presence. It's been my privilege. (laughs) <laughs> he's a conehead. Also, uh, Jeff Blackwell, he's a tech director of the CU. He's the ruling de- despot. He's ruling Decker. No, that's me. He's the ruling despot of Blackwell Communications Group, jeffblackwell.us, and at Jeff Blackwellis. Thank you, Jeff. It's a privilege. Kathleen Lee is our faith ninja at Kathleen Y-A-B-R. Thank you, Kathleen. Anytime. Also, Ed Ball, he's on the, well, Ball with our video feed this week. He also sings the songs from Frozen in the voice of Space Ghost. Uh, if you can imagine that. Uh, and, of course, you know me. I am Father Chris Decker. You can follow me online at Digital Catholic on Twitter. You can uh, join us on the interwebs at catholicunderground.tv for everything that happens from the Catholic Underground. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us on the digital continent. We are Catholic Underground. We are Faith Gone Digital. And we will see you next time. Catholic Underground.